Hi folks, my name is Aoife Malloy and I'm a survivor of domestic abuse. My abuse started when I was about five and a half years old. My mother got married and the man she married did not want me and his late parents, his older brothers were saying to him, get rid of her, she's not yours. Whereas I am the biological daughter of my mum and he knew that I was part of the package basically but for some reason he was able to bully my mum who has mental illness and um, unfortunately he persuaded my mum to pass me back to my grandmum and so I would spend some time at my grandmum's and then I would do a year at my mum, a year at my gran, a year at my mum, a year at my gran. But throughout that time I had experienced physical abuse, but downs as well, verbal abuse. I had basically been accused of breaking things I wasn't responsible for breaking, such as my brother's toy car. Um, it was a hard plastic blue, kind of what I might call stone blue, grey type colour that he, the car that he picked up in the dump and kind of repaired or recycled to work. But anyway, some part, somewhere down along the line, that car got broken and it was me who was blamed for it. Simply because I'm not biologically his and therefore he took a dislike to me. And the fact that he would beat my mother and he was selling her cameras because he had forced her back on medication. But instead of sticking to the prescribed dose, which was way too much for my mother, um, he was overdosing my mother, basically actually physically forcing medication down my mother's throat, more than the, which had been prescribed. And so my mum was barely able to function, let alone actually live. And so, you know, he would beat her, um, he would beat us as well. But me and my mum were the two worst ones that were abused. Well, one of my siblings died, he turned to my mum and said, sure, you can't mind the two you fucking have. He also, when my mum had a miscarriage, sent our cousin, my cousin Lila, who grew up as my aunt, um, he sent her with a small baby brandy and back from the pub and said, here, give that to Mila, she'd be grand. Didn't even come home and grieve with my mum when she'd also had a miscarriage. His drinking was more important to him than his family. He would take most Mondays off work and yes, he was an absolute demon in drink, which I'm ashamed to say one of my siblings has become. And so our youngest sibling who is surviving, Sean has left the family home some years ago and really wants nothing to do with our brother um, or our mum for that matter. Um, the abuse obviously escalated with my mum's siblings then picking on me because I am um, unfortunately I'm only four feet eleven in height and so with no father figure or brother that could protect me from abuse I was easy pickings for the abuse I was basically an easy target and yes I've done the stupid thing that if somebody kind of teases you which it began out as that you ignore them of course me being small and having a high-pitched voice that became sort of the the main starter of it, you know, the protagonism of it was they would tease me about my high pitched voice. So they'd ask me my name and then laugh and say Chica when I would say Aoife. And that nickname stuck for some years. Um, after that, it was, well, who's going to believe the daughter of Mad Nula? And so they got away with abuse. The Garthi would just laugh and drive away again. So. My word never seemed to be taken as serious, although I do not have the illness that my mum or my brother have, which is substance induced, rather than it being genetic. Anyway, as I say, it became sibling abuse from my mum's siblings, um, so I was basically their target. There was nobody really to defend me, and so the abuse continued for some years. Um, it be a lot of it was put downs, verbal abuse, name calling, being hit, um, lifted by my chin, punched the back of my head, knocked downstairs, mannequins dre in mannequin dress in a security decoy uniform with an imitatory <coughs> cowboy type 
um, weapon on its hand. That would be placed outside the bedroom door on two occasions. On another occasion, it was a giant stuffed panda bear which was placed outside the bedroom with the very same um, replica cowboy handgun. Thereafter, the abuse became, as I say, physical, being knocked downstairs, um, lifted by my chin, my head would be beaten from on the ceiling, um, lifted from the back of my head the same way, and again, top of my head beaten, which I developed epileptic seizures from. Thankfully, I'm now clear of those seizures since 2007. Um, as I said, I would have toot and froed though over those years, um, over and back to mom, over and back to gran, mom, gran, and so my schooling life was very severely affected by that. Not my grades, but just the um, instability of constant over and back with the schooling. And in school, I was also, for some reason, a target for bullies. I actually do not know why. I genuinely don't understand what's happening. And um, basically, they made my life an absolute misery. They made my life a living hell. And, you know, not alone had I to go through this at school in one of my national schools. But the then headmaster, who's now since passed, he was of no support to me. He asked in class, and it was denied that anything had happened on the bus or that I was being targeted on the bus. And I found that very difficult to deal with, emotionally as well as everything else. I then, unfortunately, as I say, I was getting it at home, and I actually believed what was happening was normal. It was happening to everyone else. And there's a man in the village who is many years married and has daughters. Um, well, he's one daughter and I think two sons, if I'm not mistaken. He used to call me Smiley. And I often wish that I could have gone to him and said, look, you might think I'm Smiley, I'm not. You know, I just wish I could open up to you and tell you everything about my life and what's gone on for me in my life. Um, as I said, I've also had a knife to my throat. I've been threatened um, at point blank range with a double barrel shotgun that was loaded. Thankfully, um, not fired from that close, but fired from outside the window and fired again from the window of our van. So I've had a few near misses. As I say, looking back on the abuse, it's affected a huge, huge part of my life. The abuse really changed me as a person who the person that I am. It's unfortunately been responsible for a lot of the reason why I have been in and out of refuge. And currently I am in refuge and I'm not enjoying it. I can tell you it's not a picnic. It's not a party. And basically I know that I'm not welcome in this refuge and I know that the staff would prefer if I went to a B and B or something else. I probably would have a little bit more freedom if I was actually in a bed and breakfast or a tourist hostel. I suppose I wouldn't be so conscious of you know going out um listen to some music and things like that. But what I'm hoping is if I go to the council today that I'll basically because I've got some interviews this week, I'm hoping that they'll be in a position to help me with a deposit to move into to a house which is quite rented. Um, but again, I don't know if they would make those kind of calls for me to see if um, I can take accommodation. There is one house I have my eye on, but I don't know.